Jake Ludington here at OpenStack Days in Seattle, and I'm here with Chris Hodge of the OpenStack Foundation. And one of the things that I'm hearing in hallway conversations is there are lots of people talking about um, containers and OpenStack, and, and do they or don't they play nice together? And, and can you talk about that a little? Yeah, I would, I would love to talk about this. Um, so there's, I think that within the kind of the technology world, there's been this um, conception that containers have come along, and it's the new infrastructure primitive, and that means virtualization and a lot of the things that OpenStack is providing as infrastructure isn't relevant anymore. And so, you know, OpenStack was the old thing and containers are the new thing. Um, but really, that's, I don't think that captures the entire picture. Uh, um, you know, containers are something that are always going to rely upon infrastructure. Really, any technology you use is going to rely on infrastructure. And one of the goals of OpenStack is to make infrastructure easier for you. Um, so we really see um, containers, you know, you know, whether you know, it be through Docker or LXC or you know, technologies like Kubernetes, not as so much of a competitor, but as a, as a complementary technology. Um, and, and and I think you can look at it kind of at two levels. The first is how are containers using being used to deploy the infrastructure? And so right now there are a number of OpenStack projects that deploy OpenStack using containers. Uh, the OpenStack Ansible project is one. It, it, uh, it, it installs the individual components out of LXC containers. Uh, Cola is another project. Uh, they use Docker as their base container unit. Um, they also do a full OpenStack deployment based on that. So that's OpenStack running inside a container? Right, so this is OpenStack running inside of containers. Um, so you can already see that in some way, the, the OpenStack community has looked at what containers is offering, and and they've decided that it actually provides a lot of benefits for how OpenStack is run and maintained. You know, it, it allows you to run a multitude of services inside of your infrastructure, and upgrade them independently of uh, independently of one another, but still take advantage of the collated co-located compute and storage resources. Um, so, you know, so that way, it's like the partnership between OpenStack and, and the container community has been fantastic. Yeah. What, what about the reverse, where you would possibly run containers inside your OpenStack deployment? Yeah, well, so, so that, that's a very good question, too. That containers still need a base operating system to run inside of. And there are, there, there are so in some ways, you're going to have to provision that operating system. And OpenStack is another fantastic way to do this. Now you can get started off just by running containers inside of virtual machines. You know, if you're if you're going to a public cloud provider, this is what you're going to be doing anyway. You're going to take, you're you're going to spin up some sort of virtual machine. You're going to you're going to put your containerized application inside of that, and you're going to run and manage that. And <clears throat> OpenStack is a perfect environment for doing that. Indeed, we have a project um, built around the idea of provisioning the container environment, uh, OpenStack Magnum which allows you to choose whatever container orchestration engine you want and then be able to build out you know, this idea of bays and, and, and docks and to be able to launch container apps inside of that. Um, additionally, if you don't like the overhead that's associated with virtualization, OpenStack also provides you a way to provision the bare metal machines. You can do this either through Ironic as a plug into Nova, and so you're getting all of the APIs from your Nova infrastructure, all of your virtualization APIs, being applied to a bare metal infrastructure and giving you that performance boost that you might want in running, running a containerized environment. Or even if you don't want all of the overhead of running a complete OpenStack system, Ironic is able to, is a, is a, is a perfectly fine system for standalone um, bare metal deployment and installation. It's actually what I use when I, when I want to do my container based deployments of OpenStack. So, so basically the, the short answer here is that if you want to do containers, there's, there's lots of reasons you should still be considering OpenStack. It is. It, 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 it's really a fantastic partnership. And one of the ways to look at this is consider the early days of the web. The, the key technology there was the LAMP stack. That was Linux, Apache, MySQL, and one of the P scripting languages, PHP, Python, Perl, Ruby. And none of these technologies were developed by the same company, by the same set of people. Yet what we found is that bringing them all together made them better and it turned into a really powerful tool. So when we're looking forward towards the future, you can see that yes, containers are a really powerful tool for doing something, but when you collaborate across OpenStack projects, 
you oftentimes find that you build products that themselves have a multiplicative effect on the benefit you see from it rather than just some sort of additive effect.